and hit Phillips back in across the middle on the back side of this zone defense. Now they're just going to run the option to try to pick up the first down, which they do. And Goins runs out of bounds. 42.7 seconds on the clock. Now first and 10 for the Dragons. We've got the Hammers first and 10. You know, it's amazing. They've not panicked at all. No. On this drive. Just running crazy stuff or whatever. Key steps up in the pocket, and now he's going to run it himself. He needs to get out of bounds. He slips. Does he make it? I think they say he's out of bounds. He did get out of bounds up to the 39. He ran a long way. I'm going to tell you what now, this Clinton bunch hadn't quit. No, not at all. And that's a five-yard gain, makes it second and five. Empty backfield. Keith going for the end zone now, and that pass is up for grabs. It is knocked down incomplete. Third and five. You had a chance. We got a flag in the end zone. Interesting. So we'll see the Chuck Fleischman replay. That might be an offensive pass interference. And there's a player down in the end zone. So we'll follow Mr. White Hat, see what he has to say. telling us anything. Here we go. Maybe. Then we're going to confer again. The flag came out late. I don't think it had anything to do with the actual play. I believe the injured player was Bryson Maddox. He's up. He's up. And we're still waiting for a signal. Let's look at this Chuck Flashman replay. There it is. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct on Clinton. I have no idea what that call was. I don't either. So that costs Clinton 15 yards. It's now third and 20. Just 23.7 seconds left. So now, Keith takes the snap, draws back to pass, throws it over the middle. That pass is complete, and wow, huge hit, but he's still on his feet and gets yeah, out of bounds. For Clinton, that's level. He got leveled, but stayed on his feet, got out of bounds to stop the clock with 14.9 seconds left. Not enough for a first down, but... Big, makes it a lot easier. Big hits don't do much when you don't wrap folks up. 
So we've got a fourth and six, it looks like. Keith, empty set. Three-step drop, looks, throws over the middle. That pass is complete to Goins. And Goins is down for the Hammers first and 10. The clock will stop with five seconds left. And so Keith getting everyone to the line to get set up. They're going to kill it. And he's going to clock it. And he does with three seconds left. 3.2. I think this will be the last play. It should be. Keith, empty set again, takes a snap, drops back to pass. Rolling to his right now. He's looking, hit as he throws. That pass ball is incomplete. There are no flags on the play. And that is how this game will end. Clinton came with a lot of energy. Scored 12 points on defense, but ultimately falls in the second half as Oak Ridge's offense exploded. Final score, Wildcats 37, Clinton 24. This was a fun and exciting game. Very, very well played on both sides. It's not a lot of positive, positive things for both teams. So now, oh man, if if you are Coach Darrell Keith, if you go into the locker room with your Clinton Dragons, what do you tell them? Uh, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. You know, you want to win this one. This is a big one you want to win. But this is not a district game. This one does not deter you from where you want to be at the end of the season. This one's for bragging rights. It's for pride. It's for walking into the barbershop tomorrow morning, you know, to, to, with, your head, with your head high or your head hanging a little bit. But the end goal is the, the playoffs, right? We want to get seated well so we have a good matchup first, second round of the playoffs. And so, and they still have that sitting out in front of them. If you are Oak Ridge, what are you telling your team? Uh, we got past a test. Uh, now it's time for us to to make our statement in the in the region. Get that playoff run going. So Oak Ridge will now go to Knox Central, and that will be next Friday at seven. And Clinton will have Anderson County on Rivalry Thursday. So you can check that out with uh, Mark Packer and Austin Price and the crew. They'll have that game on Thursday. That should be a good one. Clinton and uh, Anderson County as Anderson County gets the big win over Carter tonight. So, whew, boy, this game kicked off at 7 and... <laughs> We made it to quitting time. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to go off the air and stay tuned, though, because we've got the free medical clinic Friday night school board show with David Queener and Jonathan Cox. And they'll go over all the final scores of the area, take calls, call in, participate. That's a lot of fun. And tell you what, uh, we'll see you next week because <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to get out of here. Uh, yeah. What do we got next week? I don't remember. That's right. That's right. Loudon at Loudon, Kingston. Loudon at Kingston. And that should be fun. I don't, Loudon got the win tonight, and Kingston got the win tonight. So they'll be coming off wins next week, so that'll be fun. So we'll see you next week at Kingston. And uh, really enjoyed this one. Final score again, Oak Ridge 37-24 for Brad Jones. Coach Dan Shoemaker, I'm Aaron Harvey. So long, folks. We are the Oak Ridge cheerleaders here at ORUD warming up for tonight's big game. C A T.
You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. ORUD has exciting appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. the free medical clinic Friday night scoreboard Jonathan Cox and David Quinn we're glad to be with you uh week six Cox in the books flies by doesn't it David flies by man we'll be uh we'll be long we'll be in the playoffs yep. I mean it's just right around the corner things are starting to shape up a little bit uh region wise but uh I don't know big you know last night I had a big game with Bearden and Farragut uh Bearden comes back and wins that ball game sort of a slugfest really I mean it, I'll just be honest, it was really boring, just to be honest with you. It was a boring football game. I didn't watch it, but um, that's a uh, first time in, what, four years? Beards beat Farragut? Something like that, I think. Yep. yep. So, big big football game, big win there. Uh, obviously, Oak Ridge beating Clinton again. Uh, Umpteen years in a row. Big uh, you know. Big win there. Um, Coach Gaddis coming back this week to serve as, I don't know what you call it, Roy. So you can say head coach. He didn't have anything to do with the game plan, they said, or anything like that. He is in charge of the administrative stuff on the field. I mean, you know, timeouts. Uh, fourth down decisions, fourth maybe. Fourth down decisions, stuff like that. He didn't even wear a headset. so. Uh, uh, he, he wouldn't know what to say anyway. He... Uh, uh, Apparently, the coach, that's who he would want right after the fr last Friday night that he asked Gaddis if he would consider doing it. And I think he didn't want to at first, but he wound up doing it. I mean, so. good move by Coach Rang, if you think about it. I mean, he's got experience. He knows what he's doing. He hasn't been out too long, so let him get back over there and add another, win, add another win to the win total. You know, Chris didn't play very well tonight, neither at times, and Clinton for sure didn't. So... Might have to give this a little tilt to Coach Gaddis tonight. I don't know if Coach Rain could have pulled this one out or not. Maybe he could have. Maybe. That's how, how did the freshman quarterback pay for a – Is he a freshman? Or sophomore quarterback play a, for a – He – Pretty solid or – He – said his Well, he had, a, he had an interception that went a pretty good ways for a touchdown. Uh, he didn't play bad. I mean, you know, it, listen, sloppy games, uh, turnovers. I mean, you know, a bunch of turnovers, not only by Oak Ridge, but by Clinton, too. So, not a very well, not a very well played football game. I mean, uh, so, uh, I don't think either coach can be happy with their performance tonight, even though you won the ball game. But you're probably, you know, with the, with the turnovers and stuff like that, you're not, ha you're never happy as a coach. And, and some penalties, I mean, uh, you're not, you're not happy. So, uh, but, but uh, you know, Looking at Oak Ridge's schedule, it's kind of going the opposite way. They get to go play Bearden, or excuse me, they get to go play Central, which is going to be another win for them. Um, put them in good shape, you know, as as they're going down the the you know the mid midway point. Correct one thing, our guy said tonight this wasn't a region game for Clinton. It is a region game. This was played ma mainly 
the winner of this game winner of this game tonight would be sitting pretty in first place. Yeah. So what Clinton needs to do now, even though they're two and four, is to go out and win the remaining part of their games uh, region wise to come in second place and probably get a home field, probably get one round at home. That's what they need to do. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if they will or not, but you're right, Oak Ridge is who, who they got, Central next? Central next, and Anderson County and uh, Clinton obviously play each other. So Clinton's got the tougher, the the two draws there. That's a uh, that's a very weird time to play a Clinton Oak Ridge game. You know, you think that's usually like the first game of the year or late last game. You know, some just that, that's a weird timing for that football game. Yeah, you'd like to see those two games broke up just a little bit so you wouldn't have had back to back to back, you know. So. But that's the first time I think in three weeks Clinton's been home. So they were home tonight and next week. And I'm not for sure who comes after Anderson County. I'm not for sure if that's Clinton's open date or, or what happened. I bet but, it will be their open date. So, uh, to, you know, think about this. Powell, Oak Ridge, Anderson County. Not to mention West in Cleveland earlier in the year. Yeah, to start off with. So a really a really tough schedule. Uh, I mean, Jesse Smith, said it was the toughest schedule in our viewing area when he looked at it earlier in the year. I said early on if Clinton could win one of those three games and if they really got lucky and won two out of the three, they'd really be sitting pretty. So right now we're going to see if they can win the last one with Anderson County. And they've not beat Anderson County in – 15, 16 years, maybe 17. Uh, be the, the night. It's 15, 16, yeah. 17 years, something like that. Shattuck was the coach. and Yeah, it's been a while. What was I the mean, quarterback's name? Uh, man, I can't remember. Stud. Uh, Stone. Darian Stone. Darian right. Stone, yeah. So it's been a, it's been a while since uh, Clinton's beat Oak Ridge. Yeah, I mean Oak Ridge. It's been a while since they beat Oak Ridge, too. But it's been a while since they have beat uh, Anderson County. Would it so. have been that year? Did they beat Oak Ridge and Anderson came both in the same year? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Thank you. What, you. what happened to Clinton was, I think Clinton beat Anderson County in regular season, and then Anderson County turned right around in a playoff game and came back to Clinton and won the playoff game. Yep. And uh, that started the slide. That's, you know, they've been on a slide, and then they were off for a couple years, didn't play. Uh, I still say if Clinton won that playoff game against Anderson County that year, you'd never know what happened. Anderson County went on to win, a, you know, a, a, I think a game right after that and then got – some bad end of some calls there late in that Columbia game, I think it was, or Smyrna. Yeah, go to, go to I think they go to Columbia. Oh, Columbia. Yeah, you know, they went to Columbia, I think, a couple times, and they got the wrong end of the, the yeah. straw when they went down there. So, yes, yeah. you're right. So uh, That Clinton team was good. Yeah, you had Hazelhurst, and you had uh, the Stone Kid, and you had, you had some really good, yeah, yeah. good folks. Hazelhurst got hurt in a game there. I don't remember which game it was right before the playoffs right. and didn't play – I don't know if he played. I don't even know if he played that last game against Anderson County or not. I, I do not remember. Uh, so, uh, well, I uh, see Maryville keeps Harden Valley on the slide. You was right, saying Harden Valley run out. Oh, Austin East gets a win tonight. 46-14 uh, over Pigeon Forge. I understand Pigeon Forge is a really young football team yeah, with a lot very. of freshmen and a lot of sophomores playing right now. Yep. And uh, Bradley Central plays a team out of Georgia tonight. That's interesting. Chucky Dope, Big Scott County. Did you see the story about Cock County last week had some transportation issues and didn't get there to ride at the game? They didn't let them warm up. They had to just come on the field and play. Other team wouldn't give them 15 minutes. They didn't get 15. They didn't get the warm up time. Wow. And had a bunch of uh, apparently cramps and stuff. Cause it's, not, it's nice of the other team. Yeah, it was. Real sportsmanlike. Seven six. Carnes over. That Powell foot. Halls game. You know that's one of the most highly anticipated Powell. Hall's games in a long, long time, and Powell's kind of rolling. Man, Kingston over Rockwood. Rockwood's on a skid right now. Three-game skid, I think that's right. Uh, well, I know they lost last week, and I'm almost positive they lost the week before. And Alcoa just keeps and on. Greenville, same story, just different keep, week. Just keeps on rolling. It's a shame that game didn't finish with Alcoa and Greenville. I know. Because somebody deserves an L beside their name right now. So uh, Walker Valley takes Ray County. Wow. Brent, Brentwood Academy, I think, is one and four or one and five. Wow, that's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, I think one and four or one and five. Brentwood Academy, the kid 
from Webb that was a four-star wide receiver transferred to Brentwood Academy, and I think Webb's undefeated, and I think they are one and four, one and five. So look at Elizabeth, and they rolled a night two over Sullivan East. And Eagleton. Oh, wow. Did Eagleton beat Wartburg? Eagleton beat Wartburg not 21-20. That's their only their second ever win in school history. They've not been in existence long as far as the high school football team, neither have. This is have. the first varsity year. This is the first varsity year? That's what, sure. I I, I, I'm, I, that's what I thought. Central rose tonight over South Dole. South Dole sort of hit the skids too, hadn't he? Those two teams are not good. Oh, we got a call here. Let's get it. I'm sorry. Got to talk. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, uh, Squatchy County just beat uh, Coalfield 31 to 14. Squatchy so County beat Coalfield. Was that a wow. region game? 31 to 14. 31. I don't know if that's a region game or not. Okay. Kind of weird. They're playing Squatchy County. Appreciate well, you. Listen to some of that game. Yeah. And uh, Squatchy, they sounded awfully good. I mean, they they played uh, a really good game. And I was going to ask you guys something. Uh, West Ridge, uh, where are they located? That's the combination of Sullivan South, Sullivan North, Sullivan East. They made, they consolidated those schools to yeah. become West Ridge. It's right off the interstate, um, you know, up there <laughs> near Johnson City, uh, between Johnson City and Bristol. Yeah, they must have a pretty good team, right? That's a huge school. I think it, it, enrollment's probably 1,900 to 2,000 kids. 6A six six school it's then? A, I'm pretty sure it's a 6 I think they're 6A by now. Yes, I think they are 6A. Yeah, good size school. Who'd they beat tonight? Oh, uh, I forgot who it was, but David, they beat them pretty bad. David Crockett. David Crockett. Yeah, it was just up there, and I didn't see it. He hot, seen it from the back back here. Yeah, yeah it'll come back. Uh, Oliver Springs game is 45 to nothing. I think they might have called that game a little early. Uh, I know they, in the uh, second half. Uh, who'd they play tonight? They played some bright. Some bright, okay. Yeah, I, I think they might have called that game a little bit early because uh, it was 39 to nothing <coughs> that time, and then just running it clock. was 45 to nothing, and all of a sudden it was uh, over with. Yeah. So, Auburn Springs is on roll right now, again. They are. So. They are. They got a chance. Uh, they got a chance to win a few more games. They got. They still got Coldfield and and Whitwell. Uh, I don't know how good Whitwell is, but they're usually pretty good, right? Yep, usually they are. Yep. So. Okay. I Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you, man. All right. It's funny how, you know, Oliver Springs took a beating there at first, Cox, and turned it around a little bit since then. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, he kind of knew that, I think, probably going into it, the way he scheduled it. Ray County must be on hard times, too. Cause. Boyd Buchanan, your boy down there, Gary Rankins, beating up on the Chattanooga people now. He's taking advantage of it, ain't it? 35-14. He, he knew what he was doing. When he went down there, knew who his competition was going to be. He knew who it was going to be. He sure did. And Max he, County he just He ain't going to go anywhere that ain't stacked in his favor. And, you know, he you know, at that point in your career, you don't take a job and try to rebuild. No. I wouldn't think so. Uh, Anderson County wins tonight on Carter. It was 49 to nothing. Uh, I think a lot of people thought Carter would make that a little bit of a ball game. Uh, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Carter's just not any good. I mean, Seymour's not any good. Fulton's not. Carnes isn't. That, I mean, I just don't know. And I had a conversation. Jesse and I actually had 45 minutes today that we could grab lunch together. And hopefully he'll call us. We were talking about how this might be one of the worst high school football years as far as teams go that we could remember. You know, it's hard to go down the list of teams and find someone better than they were last year. The only team that might be that around here in this area right here to date would be maybe Oak Ridge. Maybe. Look, but you look at the five. Maybe. Depends on what happens the rest of the year. At the end of the year, if they've only had one loss, then if they only sustain one loss, then they're a much better football team than they were last year. Yeah. That's me. But is it because of the competition they're playing or are they actually better? Well, that's a good question, too. Everybody thought Clinton was really going to be good, and Clinton was going to, you know, everybody had Clinton picked to win the region this year. 
Well, that's not, well, I shouldn't say it's not happening. It's not happening right now, anyway, because somebody's going to have to knock old Cridge off. They're going to have to lose a couple times. Yeah. I don't know who that's going to be. I don't know. I'm sure, I think old Cridge has got Camel County left on the schedule, probably Carnes, probably North City, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Fair gets on earth. That's a non-region game, so that doesn't really count. I mean, maybe so. Bearden's a little better. I don't think West is better, but they're good. But they're not as good as they were last year. Well, they're still undefeated. Maybe we won twenty-something games in a row. So I mean, they're still. Yeah. They're doing what Mar you know, even though they lost a lot, they're doing what Maryville used to do. Maryville used to be able to lose a lot and still maintain that winning edge. Just reload. Just reload. Where I think now when you take a few injuries out over at Maryville, they're not able to reload fast yeah. enough. It at times, you know, listen, everybody it, it runs in cycles. You eventually eventually this will happen to Alcoa, eventually. You would think eventually the well the well will run dry there too. And I think, you think. I think the well is not as plentiful at Maryville as it used to be. I mean, I think they're playing. I think they're playing a freshman quarterback. Think you're right. Um, I think Will Jones got to play again tonight. Um, yeah, the starting quarterback got hurt a couple weeks ago. A couple maybe weeks ago, and the yeah. guy that got beat out for that job just didn't perform. And now I think Will Jones is starting quarterback, freshman. Starting running back over there, I think, got hurt. He's out. Yeah. He might be out for the year. I think the I don't know if the quarterback's out for the quarterback's year. Quarterback's out for the year. Running back might get back by the playoffs. Oh, okay. Good caller, you on the air. Hey, this is Lady Buck. If you remember me from the last few years, first of all, I just want to say I am so happy it's football time in Tennessee again. Um. And I want to say congratulations to Oak Ridge. Okay. And that's all I got. Um, <laughs> thank you for calling. I'm so glad you're back on the show again. All right. Thank you for calling. Thanks for watching. All right. All right. Hey, you're, you're, we won't miss it at any Friday night. All right. Thank you. All right. All right bye -bye. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Appreciate the compliments. And that is a good win for Oak Ridge. If you think about it, they go on the road. They don't have their head coach. Take a sophomore quarterback up there. Uh, Clinton's got some really talented kids. I just don't think Clinton can compete up front with Oak Ridge. Oak well, Ridge. They had somebody coaching tonight that ain't got much experience neither. They put, you know, letting Gaddis be the acting co head coach tonight. That's, that's, that's tricky. He must know the AD. He must have. That's the only way you'd ask him. That's the only way. Yeah, he had. There was some connections there somehow. Yeah, I don't know how it is, but it'll be interesting to find out how it was. So. Maybe we can hear from Coach Gaddis. He loves calling in after a win. Yeah, he'll, he'll call. We'll talk. We might try to talk to him a little later on. We'll talk. I don't even want to talk about Tennessee football tonight, but I'm sure we will later on. That's pitiful. But anyway, beside the point. Kyle. Not good. <laughs> we, we we can talk later about that. Yeah, it's not. You're right about that. It's not good. Yeah, not good. Where's Twin Springs at? I have no clue. It's Virginia Oh, okay. Tells us a lot of Close to the gap. Close to the gap, in. Yeah. Oakdale over Harriman. Wow. I don't know that Harriman's won a game this year. Wow. Don't think so. Midway beats Mid Jellicoe. Midway beats Jellicoe. That's a big. Oneida beats uh, Greenback. Ooh, Greenback. That's a big win for Oneida. 483-8112. Give us a call here on the Friday the free medical clinic Friday night scoreboard. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference so we can all continue to move forward together. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Paris. Work hard, feel good. Not 
exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacle blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111 and turn your wreck into a check. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, 
you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Uh, week six, uh, a lot of excitement going on around here. Some uh, and next week's going to be just as big as far as the rivalry game goes. Except it'll be on Thursday night. So uh, as far as Clinton and Ash County go, but Clinton and Oak Ridge tonight. Oak Ridge wins the the ball game at Clinton tonight. Looked like a huge crowd. Uh, really good gate there. So uh, sloppy football game. I'll say that. Great caller, you on the air? Hey guys, it's Jesse Smithy. How are y'all? Hey Jesse, what's going on, buddy? Uh, not much. A little bit of a, a little bit of a snoozer of a night tonight. We had some rivalry games, but uh, I don't know. Just nothing really moved the needle for me tonight. How about y'all? Nope. No, that's what we were just talking about. It's kind of a dull week, and you know, I think if Clinton beats Oak Ridge tonight, we have a lot more to talk about. But the same old, different year same story type thing and yeah there's not much going on not not, not a lot the the pal halls game what what was the story there did you hear much there yeah i mean it was kind of tight there in the first half and i think Powell's just run game just eventually wore them down i mean it's it's been a really good story and storyline to follow with halls high school having this resurgence and they entered this game five and oh and just hadn't seen that much buzz about the emory battle of emory road uh, like that in a long time but when you look at the tail of the tape between the two programs and Powell just had a couple better athletes that were just game changing type of athletes and uh, that came into play tonight Halls had a chance to kind of get into it late and, and slice into the lead but they threw an interception and Powell just managed the clock really well didn't make mistakes in the second half and um, did what they normally do against Hall. so I'm right there with you. I kind of thought Clinton and Oak Ridge might give us the, all the drama on Friday night, and you know, Clinton did a good job in the first half of uh, kind of muddying up the waters and, and making it a game, but just too many turnovers for the Dragons, and I think Oak Ridge ended up running Jarvis Dozier 41 times in that football game wow. for, for over 200 yards, and so when you have a back like that that you can really control the pace and the clock, and uh Oak Ridge staff just, I think, did a masterful job of doing that. Jesse, is there a team right now that you're surprised with? I mean, uh, or is there somebody that we didn't think was going to have what they were predicted to have? It's having a really good year right now. Is there a surprise right now? Yeah, I mean, we probably just talked about them with Halls. I mean, no, they went 2-9 and nine a year ago. And, yeah, they were competitive at times last year, but I mean, nobody had them going into this game in week six of the season. It, at 5-0, and oh, and I still feel like they held their own a little bit against Powell. It's going to be interesting to see how they finish this year when the the playoff implications come, when the pressure cooker really arrives, how will that Hall team do week <coughs> in and week out in the weeks of October. But for right now, they're they're still the surprise team, even though they lost tonight. Yeah, I, I was, you know, you, you want to see one of those games like a Clinton, Oak Ridge, or a Powell Halls, you want to see one of those teams that don't win that game quite often, like finally pull one off. And it kind of brings a little more excitement to the community and to the area and to just the football tonight. Um, you know, we, we were talking here, there's just, and you know, we, we've talked a little bit about this, there's just not a lot of, there's just, I don't know, the competition level for football is, just, it's just not where it normally is in our area this time of year. Would you agree with that? No, totally. You have six or seven kind of elite programs, and there's there's a significant drop off uh, between those. There, it's not a it's not a five or six team thing, and then there's five or six more that could easily knock off those teams. I mean, there's a clear separation between the elite and uh, the teams behind them. So, I mean, just take a look at that Anderson County Carter game tonight. I mean, Carter for a while was a surprise team. We thought they were going to be pretty good this year, and Anderson County went over to Carter and beat them 49 to nothing tonight. So it's just it's it's a different feel, a different vibe. That being said, after kind of a so-so week five and a so-so week six, I'm really excited about next week's games, and uh, we need it because again, the last couple of weeks have been kind of 
kind of dull, um, but I think next week kind of gives us a little more pop back into the high school football season. Anderson County and Clinton on Thursday night will be a fun game. I think a lot of touchdowns in that one. You'll see Boo Carter come to Knoxville and play Farragut at Farragut. Morristown West, Jefferson County is really kind of an old school rivalry, and both of those pro- programs are doing well this year. And um, then you got Alcoa and West, and what a rivalry that turned out to be over the last two or three game. years. Just fantastic games that come down to the final play in 2021 and 2022. What about Coalfield going down? Where, Sequatchie, right? Is yeah, that we right? heard so Coalfield lost at Sequatchie County tonight. Yeah. That's not a region game, is it? No, no. Sequatchie County, I think, is a 3A team that has had some success. So you're talking about a 1A team in Coalfield. Uh, going up against a, a, a good, solid little 3A team. So um, nothing to really hang your head about there. That's just a good midseason test for Coalfield. Gotcha. Um, all in all, you said there's about six to eight teams in that mix. Is, is, is Maryville still in that mix of those six teams that you're speaking of? That, not right now. Yeah. I don't think you could put them in that mix right now. And it's really difficult for me to say that just because uh, you get wired over decades of just thinking that Maryville going to reload, Maryville's going to reload, that's what they do. And we're seeing a slow kind of de- devolution of that, if that's the word, of, of just kind of thinking about Maryville differently now. I mean, they started a freshman quarterback tonight against Harden Valley. They've had injuries galore, and we're seeing them lose back-to-back games in regular seasons, and and so they are still a quality program, but they're not among the elite, I think, right now in 6A. They can play their way back into that, um, but they have some really difficult games coming up, some, some proving ground games for them coming up to, to show everybody they're still bearable. But right now, I say they have more questions than than, um, than answers. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's so weird because, you know, Anderson County goes tonight and blows out Carter, but Anderson County got – beat up pretty good by Beard, right? They did, and, and so, but you're, you're looking at kind of early season with Anderson County, injuries, new quarterback. We knew that as the course of the season played out for Anderson County, those newcomers that they got were going to get more custom. The team was going to get healthier, and they just needed some of these new faces out there to get reps, and they, they were going to be okay in 4A. They, you're just talking about Anderson County catching them at the right time. Uh, early in the season with a loaded Bearden team. So there was nothing to, I think, nothing to worry about with Anderson County, only injuries. If those continue to mount, then, yeah, you start to fret a little bit about what they could possibly be in October. But they seem to be doing much, much better. Is there any chance you'll be at that Anderson County-Clinton game next th- or this coming Thursday? A good possibility. I don't see many, many other games on that Thursday night. I could totally be wrong, but... Um, yeah, I'd like to go to it. I, I think it'd be a fun matchup. Um, That'd be the only way I go. If you go, I'll, if you go, I'll go. It'd be the only way I'll go. Oh, well, maybe we get your boys <laughs> right. in the booth. <laughs> Anderson County at Clinton on Thursday night. That'd be the only way I go. Uh, and the only, way I, and I, I, I know only Thursday night game I see. I will not be. <laughs> I will not be in the booth. <laughs> so Jesse, you said there's about six elite teams. Are we saying Greenville, Elizabethan, Alcoa, West? And who might the other two be around here? Bearden's got to be up there. I don't I, think Bearden's that good. You don't. He, no. I, I don't know. I, he looked at, at Bearden last night, and they didn't impress me. They did not impress last night. They uh, did not put anything on Drew Parrott, their quarterback. It was just going to be run, 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 play conservative, try to see if Farragut's going to make the mistakes and capitalize. They played without their running back, Jaheim Merriweather, who's going to Purdue. They played without. Brody Smith, the sophomore offensive lineman who's got a Tennessee offer, and they just played a, a kind of vanilla style of play in that game against Farragut. It paid off. They won, but there was no way that you could watch Bearden last night and say that's the team that's going to win a state championship. So is it a team that's you. scared? Is it a team that might be scared to let their quarterback lose the game? They don't play. Or, they, or are they, they just that good up game. front I mean, they, they can they just run the only let him throw. No. They only let him throw horizontally last night. He rarely tested the waters down the field. And they have some guys that you can get the ball to down the field. It's just I felt like they were going to go into that game saying, hey, we're going to totally rely on our strength here. We're not going to gamble. Uh, I just 
felt like they just kind of played it super conservative, and it's going to be interesting to see going forward with them if they entrust their quarterback with more responsibilities throwing the football. I don't think you can win big-time football high school games today running the offense they run last night. No, no. I mean, <laughs> if they get team, down, if they get down multiple they can, scores, they Cox, they're not going to win. Yeah, if they continue that same approach, they're, it's, you're not going to check off three or four playoff wins playing like that. Maybe in round one, but not multiple. But, Jesse, I was told, and I've told you this, and you know who told me this, West gets beat by Bearden if Bearden would have ran the ball and not thrown it the entire game. Yeah, there's a good possibility of that happening. I was told that by a guy that knows football. If we would have ran it every play and never put the ball in the air, we would have beat West. Well, you might be right, but the brand of football I watched last night is not high school football today. That's not the teams that's that's going to uh, win in state championships. Chattanooga, Chattanooga. I started to say <laughs> cut, boy, I couldn't get Chattanooga. Moving. That's just not the – they're just – the wide open offense, uh, old school football, I don't – I don't know. I, I'm just going to say I wasn't impressed last night. Yeah, it, it was not a fun game to watch. It was 7-7 seven to seven for a majority of the game and just waiting for a big play to happen. Now, the fourth quarter was fun. I mean, there were some big, big there, moments in the fourth quarter. There was. I agree with you. But, but hey, hey yeah, Jesse, the, it, well, that was not an impressive effort by Beard. Jesse, is Powell a team that people are going to have to reckon with coming down the stretch here and coming into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, it certainly looks like it. Um, one thing I want to – we had a reporter at that game tonight with Halls and, and Powell, and, and I tuned in on the last quarter of that game, and I didn't see Connor Wheeler, the running back, out there that much. So I uh, want to see what happened in that game, if he's injured, if he left the game, because uh, they ran um, another kid a lot in the fourth quarter, and that was concerning to me. So they still won a <coughs> meaningful game uh, with the sophomore quarterback, but they're getting better each and every week. I still think West is the team to beat right now, but we could very well see another West versus Powell game deep into the 5A playoffs. I was told by a guy at that game tonight that the Powell quarterback right now versus two, three weeks ago is uh, just a better, more just complete player as a quarterback than he was a couple weeks ago. And I heard he's yeah, like, I mean, he, yeah. he's a sophomore and not a lot of reps to him, and you can do seven and seven so much, and scrimmages will help you a little, but you really got to go to th through two or three games to really adjust to the speed and the feel of what playing a high school football game is going to be like as the starting quarterback in 5A against that schedule that they had. So, yeah, credit the, the Powell coaches for getting him ready and kind of expediting that maturation process with Deuce Rogers. And, and they're doing it easily. I mean, he's running the football. He's six foot three, two 240 pounds. Just lean. I mean, he has a good forward lean to him. Just let him run the football and then mix in a good pass every now and then. Yeah. Jesse, I think a small school collision that's in route will be Oliver Springs and Cofield down the road here. I mean, yeah. uh, Oliver Springs is playing pretty good football right now. They are. And, of course, I mean, they had some, some good players coming back, especially on defense this year. The offense took a little while to get going. Uh, that's starting to kind of come around. And, yeah, it's just a, a good 1A rivalry that you know, we've covered in the past. We're probably going to cover again. I like going to Oliver Springs. I like going to Coldfield games. Yeah. So we'll try to get to that and, Two great places and, uh, to and get some coverage of that. Well, all right. But he's got us up to date. We're up to date. We're ready. Hey, wait a minute. One question. I, we know, I know you're the high school guru, but does the Vols have a chance tomorrow? Does who? The Vols. Does Tennessee have a chance they, tomorrow? Oh, man. I mean, big underdogs against UTSA. So. You know, it's going to be a, a tough one, but yeah, I think they have a chance. All right, that's a, chance. Uh, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> hey, let, let's hey, let's do that again soon. I had fun today. All right. All right. Yeah. So, hey, Jesse, Good thank again. you as always, man. Appreciate it. Yes, yes sir. All right, thank nice you, man. Let's take a break, man. We appreciate Jesse Smith. He calls from Five Star Prep. He calls every Friday night. Just about it works us in. Keeps us up. He's a wealth of knowledge, and we appreciate him calling. I'm glad Cox can get him to call in here and give us a little insight on some stuff that's going on because he keeps up with high school sports year-round. He's not a fly-by-night guy for just 12 or 14 weeks. He's a year-round guy. So we appreciate Jesse Smith. Hey, let's take another break. We'll be right back here on the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard here in just a few minutes. Football is back, and OMB Law is excited.
excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower, featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. Here we go, Billy, sweetheart. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers.
Basketball is back. And OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. Uh, Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday, Friday Night Scoreboard, folks. If you need a doctor, check with Free Medical Clinic. They will get you in. Don't go without seeing a doc when you got an opportunity because they'll take care of you, all right? Appreciate Free Medical Clinic helping us out, being a sponsor here, and all of our other sponsors. We appreciate them. So, week six in the books. Uh, Clinton Oak Ridge, mm. same old, same old, old Cridge. Harris County goes to Carter, wins tonight. Everybody thought it was going to be a close game. Turned out to be a route. Next week, Clinton and Anderson County. Uh, Clinton's got to clean some things up. I've been saying it for weeks. They've still got to clean some things up. Uh, yep. So uh, They got their five minutes of onside kick work, though. Yeah, they might have. I don't it's think Oak Ridge kicked you it. Oak Ridge didn't onside kick tonight. They pooch kicked a lot. They knew though. after you called out the five minutes. Yeah, they did. wonder where your homer is. You know, if I'm not mistaken tonight. Is he in Vegas? Is <laughs> that where he goes on? He, he went to Vegas a couple weeks ago. I think the biggest thing about next week is, is like Jesse said, you finally got some games that are probably going to be a little more competitive, a little more meaningful. You got the Maryville Bearden game, you got the AC Clinton game, you, West Alco. I forgot about West Alco. That's the game of the week next week. And did you say Beard and Maryville? Beard and Maryville. But West Alco, that's the game of the week. I think Maryville. I think Maryville wins that Beard and Maryville game for one reason. Maryville. I mean, Bearden's running backs out. I know Maryville's got some injuries too. And the big lineman for Bearden, the Smith kid, apparently he's got a hairline fracture somewhere. He's wow. out. Yeah, he didn't play last night. He's out. Ain't no telling. You know, he's a big – this kid's a big kid. I think he said over 300 pounds. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, that's what they said last night on TV. He's got a hairline fracture. I don't know whether he does or not. I'm only repeating what the boys on TV said last night. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'll take I'll take Maryville in that game. I don't think – I don't think Bearden um, – I don't even know where the game's so at. It really the don't freshman matter. Freshman quarterback it against really, the Bulldogs. Yeah, I'll take the freshman quarterback against the Bulldogs. It don't even matter to me where it's at. So I'll take the it. freshman quarterback's dad was an all-state quarterback at Bearden. Was it Bearden? Okay. Well, he goes to Bearden and wins. He goes to Bearden and wins. He goes to wherever and wins. So let's <laughs> see who this is. Go ahead, call you on here. Uh, yes, guys, you uh, mentioned Alcoa earlier in the show, and I was wondering why they didn't. Uh, move up from 3A. I mean, their region games are Austin East, Union County, Scott County, Kingston. You know, I just figured they'd maybe want to elect to move up to 4A and, you know, you'd see your Greenville games and eventually in the playoffs and Elizabethans and Anderson County games. I just figure those will be a little bit better competition for them. And Caller, I'll tell you this. I totally agree with you. I kind of called them out on that. Five Star Preps yeah. kind of called them out on that as well, just simply because we have no clue why they would not play up. Uh, I think the state of Georgia, I think the state of Georgia does it the right way. You win back-to-back -back state championships you're, the next year that it's reclassified, you bump up, and then you go. You don't win it for two years when they reclassify, then you get bumped back down. But didn't Alcoa play up for a couple years when they, they were 2A they and played up to 3A? They have never played up. Oh, I thought they played up. They I'm have sorry. never played up. We did some research on that because we I thought the same you thing. Thought the you same did. thing? Well, yeah, we did some research. They have never played up a classification. But I will say this. Their regular season games this year, if they played up, would have not been any more competitive than what they are in 2A. 3A or sorry, 4A. 4A football right now is not – it's just not good. They would have killed Fulton. They'd kill uh, uh, Gibbs. They'd kill Seymour. They'd beat Anderson County. Uh, they're just – they wouldn't – it just wouldn't be that competitive. Now, the playoffs would have been awesome. You know, you get Elizabeth and Greenville uh, this year. Last year, you'd got Anderson County, you know, Alcoa. It would have been, it would have been a lot better. Uh, but the regular season – I don't see much difference this year, year in and year out. Definitely a better league. Definitely a better league. Um, right. Except when AE was good back, you know, years and years, years ago. Years ago, yeah. But definitely a better league, caller. And, caller, I, I totally agree. 
If you're an Alcoa fan, at what point do you get tired of playing Austin East, Scott County, Claiborne County, and these schools like this that literally bring no competition <laughs> and your non-district game was – did they go to like Nashville somewhere and play a, a non-region game? Like uh, Ravenwood or something? Isn't that where they opened up this year? Earlier, yeah, first game of the year, I think they were down that way. I don't know who they played, but that's right. Yeah, and if you're Alcoa, when do you get bored with beating up on those, those schools? When do you go try your hand with Al, uh, with Maribel, or sorry, with? Um, they do play Maribel this year, don't they? Yeah, they do. But when when you go try your hand in the playoffs against Elizabeth and in Anderson County and uh, Greenville, you would think that would catch up with them eventually, though. But so far, it's not. You would think only in the playoffs it would catch up to them, but it's yeah. not. It has not. Well, it no, don't because. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Oh, I know that uh, Greenville game that. You know, that was a couple of weeks ago that got called. Greenville was <laughs> Greenville was taking it to them. I mean, that was, they were challenged in that game. Yeah, and Caller, I'll tell you this. It might be this year they didn't move up because this is the first time in probably eight or ten years that they could say this might be the, the worst Alcoa team we've had. And it's not sure. skilled position bad. It's up front on both sides of the ball. They're just nowhere near what they've been. Right. Yeah. And if you're new, the new head coach, and you win your couple state championships, then you move up and you don't win, you know, what happens yeah. over there? So. The interesting game is Friday night with them. Yes, it, yeah, it will. And I know, I, I, I'm, Color, I was with you, and we called them out. Why Why are you not moving up? I mean, that we basically called there and ask. Why are you not moving I mean, up? And that was left up to the head football coach, and he decided not to do that. I mean, you you heard it. Region games: Austin East, Union County, Scott County, and Kingston, and they beat Union County tonight. What, fifty-five to nothing? Yeah, yeah. And, and if you're an Alcoa Tornado, you know I bet you are just pumped about every one of those games. <laughs> <laughs> Great gate tonight. Yeah. 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 Where are you going? I'm going to Scott County. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for taking my call. All right, you're welcome, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Great call, you on here. It's Homer. Homer, did you ride the bus up with uh, Joe G? Oh, no, talk to him on the field a little bit, and I'll see him this week at the gym. Talk to him on the field? You didn't go to the game. Uh, well, that's untrue, because I have proof. You do? I do. Oh, it's at Clint. That's who you're really for anyway. <laughs> you was there. You sat yeah, on you the Clint sidelines. Most of the times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you yeah. got me. I'm... A Clintonian, like David Queener over there. What do you mean in the gym? What are you doing in the gym? Anyway, so that was a true blood and guts game. That was, man, I was sitting beside David and the other broadcaster, that's my roommate. We were just talking about the game at halftime. Like, this is the most compelling and energetic game we've had from Clinton in a long time. Even the Clinton crowd was, like, when, when the quarterback threw that pick six, that half, that was the loudest we've ever heard a Clinton crowd. And that was just, man, that was the true blood and guts game. I want to I wanna dog Clinton and talk crap, but, man, they they gave us all we wanted in the first quarter. They played a good game. And I even, I even said two weeks ago, if our quarterback turned the ball over, it would be close. Luckily, we cleaned that up in the second half. And like Joe Gattis said at the end of the game, there's no other game he would rather come back for out of retirement than beat Clinton on their home field. And I agree with him. Tell reason Wildcats won tonight because they had Gaddis Rain would have lost that game tonight. <laughs> Two great coaches. It wouldn't have mattered. How we know he didn't coach in the game, so we don't know that yet. I he's never, never beat know. Clinton. He's, he's never beat Clinton, I nope. don't think. Yeah, well. He probably has. He was a pal for a little I mean, while. He's an old Ridge coach. He's yeah. never beat as well. Yeah, it's an old Ridge coach. No, he's never beat Clinton. He's still winless. And on top of that, this is the 14th consecutive win a school record for Oak Ridge against Clinton. So a little bit of history was made, and we're enjoying every bit of it. Hey, caller, how's that sophomore quarterback look in person? Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't like. He had not seen him. I hadn't seen him. Say <laughs> like, like, what? You said you hadn't seen him. What do you mean? You hadn't seen him. How does he look in person? You, you said, said you hadn't seen him. I haven't. 
I haven't been like up close to him, so I couldn't tell you. I'm talking about tonight at the game. You were there. How'd he look? Oh, I mean, a little shaky in the first half, but second quarter cleaned it up, and our running back just carried the team, kept it simple. I think 40 carries, over 200 yards, pretty unreal game by him. Yeah, I think 41 yeah. carries, two something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that was an unreal game by him. Yep. Really balanced attack, I think 200, over 200 yards passing and rushing, so not a bad game, but we might we might as well have gifted, the, gifted them the game in the first half. I mean, their offense really didn't do anything. It was us giving them the ball. You know, that's what happens, but hey, win's a win. Ugly, but a win's a win. Yep, we don't matter how you win. Next week? Do what? Do you think they're going to beat AC next week? Uh, I have no idea. I would. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's going to be a good. I think it's going to be a really good football game. Yeah, I, I was I, talking to a couple of the Clinton people I'm friends with over there, and I asked them about it. All of them agreed this is a more meaningful game in terms of region, but like just the pure, just pure rivalry and hatred. AC is more uh, a game they would probably want more. Obviously, you want to win both, but the Clinton fans want the AC game the most, even though this game is more meaningful in terms of region standings. Uh, you're, prob you're probably right. I would think that we're going to get to I, th I would think Harris County is going to give the dose to Clinton next Thursday night, just like Oak Ridge gave a dose to him with the running game, and, and Anderson County is capable of doing that. Plus, they might have a little better passing attack than what Oak Ridge has got. So, I would think Clinton will. I don't know that we've seen Clinton play a really good football game all year long. I would think next Thursday night they will have to play that game in order to win. If not, it could be a blowout. Is it well, fair to I say mean, Clinton? Clinton is, they, go ahead. Go ahead. Is it fair to say Clinton's probably got better skill position, but Anderson County's better up front? I don't know that. Uh, I don't. I don't, I mean, Keith, I don't know. Keith's going to be the most athletic electric player on the field. Oh man, he was, Keith was the best player on the field tonight, man. I don't know if you guys watched the game, but I did. Man, man, he is a baller. He just too <laughs> deep. He should have been sacked ten times, but he he just got out of there. I don't know how he did it, but <laughs> yeah, he kept he in the in the first half. He kept he kept Clinton in the ball game in the first half. He he did and. Uh, you're right, but it's going to take more than it's going to take more than him next Thursday night in order to win that ball game. And you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know if Clinton can beat Harris County or not. Uh, right now, I would say questionable. Well, if they lose to AC, what will your guys' judgment be on the coaching staff if they go 0 and 3 against the Big Three? Now they're still going to make the playoffs for the first time in forever. But I yeah, I mean, you know, can they win out with what games they got remaining with Lenore City and Carnes and I don't know who else is in there. I don't have any other. I'd, is it Gibbs? Gibbs. Gibbs. Can they win those three games and win out and, you know, be 5-5 five and, five and go to the playoffs and possibly have a home football game that's a playoff game still coming maybe second if they win the rest of those games? I, you know, I don't know how you get on the coaching staff uh, when you make the playoffs and you have a, a home football game. It's a playoff game, so I don't know. I, I mean, jury still out because they got to face the North City who beat them last year. So I mean, I understand that. I'm with you on that. They've got a, you know, this is a bad stretch. For, you know, the way this schedule come out is not very good for Clinton. It doesn't go. It doesn't favor Clinton. It favors everybody that's it's playing. Heritage. It's Heritage last game of the Heritage year. Heritage's last game of the year? Well, that's not a region game, is it? Uh, Non-district. No, no, non-district. No, no, no. It the is. only district games they have it's left is North City and Cards. North City and Cards, right. So, can Clinton win those two games? You know, we don't know. Possibly. I mean, they'll have to play City, good football. Even though they're, even though the North City's coach got fired, they're still, it's like they never missed a beat. So that's what's going on over there that they have uh, cooking up in the culture. I think if we look back a couple of weeks, we sat right here and we said that Clinton was 0-2 and, and they would end up being 2-2 two and two after they beat Scott County and Campbell. And yeah. Campbell. And we said if they could win one of the next three, right, it wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't be bad. If it was two of the next three, that'd be great. Yep. 
And I think you're right here you go into the last game, and if you lose the AC game, you're going to win out. You're going to win your last three games of the year. And, you know, you're going to be 5-5 five and five. Five and five with a home playoff game, second in the district. Yep. Or region. In the region. Well, the last thing I'll say, that was, the, that was probably that I can remember the most exciting Oak Ridge game I've ever been at, even though it was at Clinton. But, like, Gaddis made that game. Like, you would have thought he was the head coach. He didn't miss a beat. I don't know if, I don't know if talk is there, but I think the turning point in the game, third quarter, one of the Clinton players, number one, he got an enforcement like penalty. Obviously, they threw a flag, 15 yards. And for whatever reason, that same Clinton player is jawing at Coach Gaddis, jawing at him, talking all the mad crap you can imagine. And Coach Gaddis, as the, both teams are walking for 15 yards, he's in the ref ear. Let him know that you're going to let the player keep talking to me like this. And soon enough, he got fired up when that ref threw that other flag, and it was mayhem after that. And he just – Kid I've got never, ejected. It's been a, kid. a long time since I've seen Coach Gaddis that, that fired up. And I loved it. Was that the Oak Ridge kid, maybe? No. no was that the, the kid at transfer? No. Uh, I don't know if that's the kid at transfer or not, but – uh, he probably knows, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say his name, but I don't. I don't think so. Okay. So. Well, the kid got, kid got ejected after that too. Also. Yeah, yeah, that's the same kid though. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's what I'm saying. He got ejected though too. So, yeah. Yeah, he got two unsportsmanlike penalties in the span of 30 seconds, and that fired up Coach Gaddis, and that was kind of the momentum shift you could feel in the air. Well, that. I, t I tell you something else. The difference in the game tonight was Oak Ridge's special teams. You know, Oak Ridge kicks a couple field goals, makes their extra points, and then later on in the – maybe in the second half, Clinton has stopped Oak Ridge, and they've got penalized and knocked them back big time in yardage. I mean, I think it went from their own 28-yard line back to Clinton's side of the field, and the kid from Oak Ridge absolutely booms a punt down to the 7-yard line and pins them yeah. deep. And that was probably the turning point in the second half as far as the game – Oak Ridge special teams did not won the ball game for Oak Ridge. And, and there's other things they did, too, but that really played well in the game. Yeah, and that's a sophomore kicker we have. And he can boom at 50 yards. Hopefully he's never put in that situation, but he can boom at 50 yards. Well, I say he he played a big part in the game tonight. I mean, uh, to me, he he's the difference in the game right now. Well, with that being said, like I said, I want to talk crap, but I can't because it was a good game by Clinton. But... There were some injuries on both sides, so obviously I wish and hope the Clinton players that are injured that they do get better because that was a that was a blood and guts game. You can tell both teams wanted it. And unfortunately, there was injuries on both sides, so hopefully it's nothing serious. I know Clinton's middle linebacker, who I've known since a kid, since he was a kid, he got, he uh, had a concussion and had to go to the hospital. So hopefully he's all right. I hope so. I didn't know there. I didn't know anybody got hurt that bad. So. Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Like the blood and guts game. Both teams wanted it. So. Well, ho maybe you'll be there next Thursday night, and you can call us again Friday and tell us about Thursday's game. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Go Dragons. Uh, yeah, go Dragons. There you go. <laughs> See, it's a natural tune. Yeah, yeah. He just says go Dragons. You he, know, I guess his fan. He, you know, I wonder what his fan base is telling him right now. He's got all these people. You know, he's got an audience, as he said. Yeah. He's got an audience. And they call him and tell him all this stuff that he needs to say yeah. and do all this stuff. So, I wonder what his audience thinks right now. He lets on like he's an Oak Ridge guy. Says he hangs Set out. There you know, David. he's talked to Who's Coach David? He's David Clary. Oh. He says he's talked to David Clary tonight, and he's talked to Coach Gaddis. He might have waved at Coach Gaddis's direction. Coach Gaddis didn't talk to him tonight. He knows better than that. Yeah. He said over on the Clinton side, I meant to call Brad and see if he could get him on. I guarantee you he probably had orange on tonight, too. No, I would no. bet money he did. Acting like a Tennessee fan. Yeah, yeah he's probably what he's going to say he's a Tennessee fan, probably. You're right. You are right. Cox, anything up for a jump out to you tonight? I, we I know talked I asked a little, you dull, week. little dull week, a little, little boring. I, you know, and I wasn't cheering against Oak Ridge or Powell. It just would have been cool to see one of those teams finally get over the edge against the opponent. Um, you know, Onada's quietly just rolling through here and plugging along and, um, you know, get, getting better. And uh, Anderson County's starting to play really good football, I think. Uh, so Anderson County's even that record, I think, to 3-3 three and three now. Is that right? Yeah. 
yeah, I think, you know, new new play caller up at Harris County start the year. And I'd say that's got going the right direction. Uh, you know, probably more comfortable quarterback play. And uh, they, they look like they're kind of rolling here. And just interested to see what unfolds. I think next week, uh, next week will be a great week of high school football. Um, be interesting to see what happens in the Maryville Bearden game, the Anish County Clinton game. You know, this is a lot of inconsistent play so far this year. A lot of inconsistent play. You know, I was sitting there watching Grace play tonight, and you know, a dad asked me, he said, What makes, you know, what, what gets a team like this over the edge? I said, Well, you can't go to Notre Dame and lose, come home, have five turnovers, and lose to a Lakeway team that's you could possibly beat. You know, good teams win three, four, five, six, seven in a row. Oh, you get on run. And they get better. And they get better at Not the same time. Not just win, they get better. They get better, yeah. There's yeah. a difference in winning and getting better and winning, too. Yeah. At the same time. I mean, I, I can remember watching Buck coat and his teams over at Fulton. You know, the, you want to play Fulton first two or three weeks a year. But they got better. They got better. They got better. I think that's what Maryville for years did. They won, but they continue to get better every week. You know, it's scary when you're winning games, but you don't see any improvement. Well, you get better for play out. You, you're constantly right. getting, you're peaking at the right, you know, yeah. you hear that peak word all the time. We're peaking at the right time. Yeah. We've got it. We've got the momentum headed in the right direction. Yeah. You play uh, penalty free football. You don't make mistakes. You don't turn the ball over, stuff like that. You just have clean football games. Man, when you start clicking like that, Yep. When it starts clicking, it don't matter what you use an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator call, and it works. You know your kids are tuned in, and yeah, that's sure. the that's the challenge in high school football. I think is getting your kids to believe and believe in the system yep. and believe in the coaches. No doubt, and that's any sport. That's what well, that yeah. is. It it's is. It's not sport. just football. It's a, if, it's every. If sport. you're not getting better and you're just clocking in just to say you went to practice, then you know when that when that postseason comes, you're going to go home feeling. You, you can go home feeling bad. You'll be I always said this about Fulton in basketball. You know, I don't care what we do from November to December, <laughs> but come January, you can go back in the history of Fulton basketball and look from January yeah. through February and count the 10, 12, 14, 15 wins in a row when it's really getting start. You start really playing good basketball. If you ever have a chance to do it, just ask Fry Daddy and let him tell you the stats. He probably can tell you. But there's a bunch of them there, man. We usually there's know a, by the middle of January how good we're going to be. That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. You know right after you go over and play, and we used to be the Super 16 at Bearden Union Year or going to Maryville and playing. You know what your basketball team, just like a football team, you know you know right now. I mean, Oak Ridge has to be feeling pretty good tonight. They're playing a whole lot better football than they played last year. I, I don't know if they have the same amount of talent that they had last year even, though. That's the kicker. I think they were a little deeper at running back. They had two of those running backs back yeah. there last year. Young quarterback. And a young quarterback this year. So, uh, you know, the future looks pretty good for Oak Ridge. Anyway, yeah. or I think it does. I don't know about anybody else. So. For sure. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So. I agree. Well, like I said, week six. Next week's a big week. Uh, is next week all non-region games, or are there some region games in there? Is it non-region week next week? Is Bearden and Maryville on the same region? They are, Maryland right? The That's region. a region game, right? Yeah. Is that a region game? That Majority. ain't a region. Is our game a region game or just a no. – just a? That's a good game right there next week. Loudon at Kingston. I don't think Loudon's as oh, good as – Oh, you're asking me if that's a region. Is that – no, know. it's Bearden and Mar uh, Maryville. Maryland. It is. is a, it, it is, is a region game, yes. So – but that'll be a good football game right there next week. That game right there will be a good football game. Yeah. Loudon and right. Kingston. It always is. That's so right. – uh, I tell you what, let's take another break and we come back and get to my better Rocky judge. Top. Uh, we'll talk a little Tennessee football. We'll be right back here in just a few minutes.
season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your red into a check. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine and always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference so we can all continue to move forward together. Here we go, Billy, swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. Your local Ferris dealer is SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Call 865-354-0600. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. 
1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night School Board. And as I've said for six weeks, don't go without seeing the doctor. Go see the Free Medical Clinic and uh, catch up with them uh, if, you, if you need some to see a doctor. Uh, and, and don't go without. Don't put your health off. Uh, let's get this line here right quick. Been holding for a while. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Anderson County, one forty-nine to zero. All right, buddy. Thank you. Go Mavs. Go Mavs. See, bud. All right, Cox. You know we had this mysterious caller last week that called in, and he wanted to Romberry. He called in and said all this. You know, he was big hype on Tennessee. Yep. Tennessee's going to do this. Tennessee's going to do that. Tennessee is this and that, you know, and I said, well, I'll tell you what, Barry, that's Saturday night's game. I'll call you Sunday. Well, couldn't talk to him Sunday because he is so sick of the game. I had to wait till oh. Monday. So uh, he's not going to call us tonight. He's nowhere around. He's gone somewhere, I think. But uh, he just, he couldn't stand it. It made him sick. It made me sick. I, you know, I picked him today, I picked him today to win on the radio by three. Why pick him by 20? Why? What's the spread? I don't have a clue. I don't really care. I don't, it, whatever it is, I take the points in the visiting team tomorrow. Mm. I don't think Tennessee can cover. They got beat by Army. Who? UTSA got beat by oh, Army. I thought you meant Tennessee got beat by Army. Oh, I no. said, well, wait a minute. That's a game I've missed. Somehow. Yeah, UTSA got beat by Army. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Said their quarterback Mays. is questionable. Mays needs to get back in the, on, on the field. I'm told he's not playing again tomorrow. He will dress. Game time decision and game time decision will be the same as it was last week. And, if you know, a smart decision tomorrow would be not to play him because next week is South Carolina. Isn't that right? You have to win the next three ball games. Yeah. You but, have hey, to win. let's get off Tennessee just a minute. What if Alabama loses tomorrow? To Ole Miss in Alabama, Alabama will be out of the playoff picture. They will drop down out of. They'll and drop it's still down. September. Yeah, it's, that's what I mean. That's how big it is. What if Lane Kiffin comes to Alabama tomorrow and wins that football game, and Alabama will drop out of the top 20, not the top 25. They'll drop out of the top 20. They're already down to 13, I think. Tennessee might drop down to the top 25. They've dropped down to 20 or 21. I don't think Alabama will drop out of the top 25, but they'll be done in the playoffs. Yeah. They'll be done in the playoffs. So, I know we talked a little bit about this last week, and we'll, we'll get back to Tennessee in just a minute. There's some other things to talk about. Have you jumped on the prime train yet? No, oh, I'm, I'm out on that. Huh? I'm out on that. Did you watch a game last week? I did until I fell asleep, and then I woke up, and it was in double overtime. Did you see the kid, the hit on the kid for Col that the kid made yeah. from Colorado? Did you think it's dirty play? Mm, no, not in real time. In real, you talking about the when he was going up the sideline, safety came over and hit him. Yeah, hit him up, put him. I mean, he's hurt him enough he had to go to the hospital and he's out probably for two or three weeks with a lacerated maybe I liver. Maybe I didn't see. Were you talking about when 12 was running up the sideline? Yeah, and the ball was out and he hit him on the side. The kid yeah, came when in. When I hit first him on the saw side. it, I didn't think it was a dirty play. When they put it in slow motion, it was. You, I you, thought, ooh, it's a bad hit. Yeah, bad hit. But I thought in real time, it was like the Tennessee, the crackback. I didn't hear crack. That's that was a terrible call. Slow motion. No matter how you looked at it, it wasn't a good call. But yeah, when the kid was running up the sideline there in 18, the safety came over and and hit him. I thought it was just a good play at first. Then after you start looking at it, he could tell he didn't have the ball. See what I'm saying? Like, he could see the ball go up in the air, and then he lowered his head to hit him. He knew, you know. I thought he hit him after the ball had already hit the ground. That's right. See, I thought at first, like, you know, yeah. bam, bam, he thought he might have caught the ball. So, I give Coach, I give credit to Coach Prime. No doubt. He called people out for calling him making death threats yeah. on the young man. Called it out. Said it's just a football game. Yeah. 
you know, his, his kid will be back in a couple of weeks. It's a football play. I, I, I thought that spoke highly of, of him. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I think we'll see what Colorado's made of <laughs> tomorrow night. I mean, but we're still got to keep Oregon. in mind who they've played. Understand, but tomorrow night starts. They got Oregon tomorrow night. And then the next Saturday, I think it's USC. So it's do, about you to get know, real. do you know that I heard, I, I, people are saying, if, if I'm hearing right, and I've been known to not hear right, <laughs> people are saying that they lose tomorrow night against Oregon, but they have a good chance against, against USC. Now, I would think that would be the opposite. Isn't USC supposed to be a pretty good football team this year? The Heisman Trophy winner. Okay. I mean, what do you think? He's really getting ready to get in the prime time. These first three weeks, <laughs> these first three weeks were. Question. Yeah. Two weeks, three weeks from now, if he's undefeated still and has beat Oregon and UCLA, will you be on the prime train? I don't know. I don't like some of these. I, I got to give credit. They were terrible last year and they're better. But I'm not all into this just finding something somebody says and then starting the personal chance and all the other stuff. I mean, it's just. Hey, I don't but know. it's working. Yeah, well, there listen, you go. Listen, I'm not for the way he come in and done the program. But, you know, listen, he made some sense. What he said about the, the they fired the football staff. Okay? They fired him at, call, they fired all of them. I don't think he kept any coaches. And his saying was, who do you think recruited the kids, the football staff? So I want to find out who wants to stay and who, who's for real and who's for not. He's honest, you know. I, I just thought, I, I can't believe it's worked for him. He's, he's won three games. He's, I think it's a story at three games if he don't win another he's got one. Great, he's got better players than they had. He's got better coaches. You look at the coaching staff. The coaching staff he put together is really impressive. And he's fatting another coach next year. Warren Sapp's coming to coach on the defensive side of the football for him next year. you got some NFL players that's going to yeah. come. I mean, kids are going to want to go play there eventually, I think, so, more than what they do today. Let me say this. He's a great salesman. He's a good businessman. You know, they keep putting all these things out. We made $2.8 million today. You know, you see, you see that information that came out. So here's what I'm going to ask you. Let me, put, let me turn the table a little bit. Could Peyton Manning do what Deion Sanders is doing? No. Nope. Okay. Could a Patrick Mahomes, when he gets done, come and do what Deion Sanders is doing? I mean, are we going to see a new trend? Maybe. Of these. I'm going to back up about Peyton Manning. I'm not a huge Peyton Manning fan, okay? You're I started. Not? To, no, I'm not a Peyton Manning fan. I don't really, you know, I, I'm not a, I, I, he didn't win us a national championship. T. Martin won a national championship. T. Martin don't get no credit for it. I mean, you know, if, if you talk to some people, they think Peyton Manning had something to do with that national championship. He did stand it on the sidelines or in the stands. I don't know where he stood and watched the game, but it wasn't on the field. It wasn't between the lines. Okay, he did. Did he? Did he play? You're over shaking your head. Did he play? No, no he didn't play. Did he? He did not play. T. Martin got a streak. I know Peyton's got a streak, but T. Martin won the national championship and gets no credit for that because of Peyton Manning. It's my personal opinion, and it. But it's the truth. It's the truth. Now, T. Gets want, the, T get, doesn't get as much credit as he deserves because people <laughs> always want to talk about Peyton. Right now, okay. you want to look at. Uh, prime time doing commercials and Peyton doing commercials, they probably do about the same amount of commercials as far as stuff like that. Patty, but, Patty Mahomes, another one, does a ton of commercials. Would people want to play for Peyton Manning like they want to play for Deion Sanders? What's, is, the draw, is the draw bigger there? Brett Favre, I mean, could he come do it? I, I don't know. I'm just... I'm just I'm wondering if this is opening a, a door or a, or a can of NFL players trying to get into college coaching. Does Florida State or Auburn right now wish they'd have hired Deion Sanders? I don't know about Florida. I'm going to say yes on both. 
But I don't think Dion, I don't think he'd went to Florida State though. He might have went to Auburn, but I don't think he'd went to Florida State. See, I think he's a very smart guy, and I think he went to Colorado because there was nowhere but one way to go. Uh, uh, what, same way at Auburn, wouldn't you say? No, pressure's different. Because it's SEC? Pressure's different. Okay. They might have won four or five games, but they thought they should have won ten and beat Alabama and played for the SEC championship. That's just their mindset. Right. We live in a world where you got a lot of orange goggles. <laughs> You're right about that. Listen, does he stay at Colorado three years, or is he gone in two? Why would he leave? He don't need money. He can get players. He don't need money. I think it's all about He can win. I think it's all about the hype. You go somewhere else bigger and better and get game it Game day shows better. up in Boulder. Yeah, when's the last time? Not only game day, but all of them show up. Fox and so all So why of does he need to leave Boulder? There's no pressure. They can only go up. He yeah, can get whoever he you, wants. Is a recruiting the same in Boulder as it is in, uh, let's say, uh, USC. Yeah, I think he had the number one prospect in the country going to Jackson State. So he's either a good BS or he's a good recruiter one. The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, think about that. I, 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 there's no doubt in my mind that the Colorado was something he was looking for. It's his story. It's what he likes. The world's against us. We won zero or one games last year. Colorado's no pressure. Football's back. We got money. We don't need money. He's got money. He's got, I mean. Yeah, but when he went there, they didn't have no money. No, but I mean, the, he's. They signed him to a contract. Didn't they have the money pay to pay it. <laughs> they can now. They couldn't pay him. They, so they couldn't now. play him at Jackson State. They couldn't pay him down there no. either. They, he had to sell tickets in order to get some guaranteed money. But I, I'm just, I'm, I, I don't know why he'd leave. Well, it makes a lot of sense. I ain't really thought about it in the way you just put it out here to me. But it makes a lot of sense. Why do you leave when well, the expectations are not as high there as they are someplace else? Nope. But it would probably be easier to recruit at some place like Auburn or some place for sure like Florida State. All right, let me ask you a question. Would he, you think he'd, let's just say he wanted to go someplace else. Would he go to someplace like South Carolina? I don't know. Would he go to some place like uh, Clemson or Alabama if Nick Saban gets out eventually? Would he go to Alabama? I think he, I think he might go back to Florida State because that's his, that's his place. So from what I've heard, how I've heard him talk about, I don't think he has no desire to go back there. I just right now, maybe two years from now, three years from now, situation. Would he, would he go to Texas A&M if they run Jimbo Fisher off? Man, you talk about going someplace that's got the jack and that he'd be in the hotbed and recruiting in Texas. Would he go to Oregon? Uh -huh. All that Nike money. He's getting all that Nike stuff now. He was teaching. They was talking about him the other day. Uh, with all the different uniforms, he said he loves with this, all these different uniform combinations he's getting, and the opportunity Nike's affording him to have all these. Kids love it. Kids love it. I, I heard love a guy it. call in today talking about Tennessee's colors, that Tennessee, the color they wore to South Carolina. He said he, last year he didn't like that color. Tennessee traditions, orange and white, or I think tomorrow Tennessee's wearing all orange. Are they? Orange jersey, orange pants, whole nine yards. Uh, Maybe a white helmet, not an orange helmet, but a white helmet. He likes traditional colors, but that's not what kids like it's not today. They like. It's not, it's not, it's they like that little different, throwing that smoky gray yeah. in there, wearing a little gray, wearing a little gray, wearing all black or something with it, or mixing it up, different colored helmets and stuff. That's what's made Oregon. They put them on a snatch. They were good, but it put them on the national scene. Oh my gosh, where are they going to come out in tonight? Yeah, well, they're coming out in. They're coming night. out all. They, remember those? They had the metallic helmets and the gray uniforms yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. back to the Alabama situation. Alabama's might might be in worse shape than Tennessee is. That might be a winnable game for Tennessee if they can fix some things. They got to win the next three. <laughs> okay. So that's South Carolina, Texas A and M, and UTSA. You count UTSA yeah. in that next three. These next right? three. They got to win these next three home games. Everybody gets back. Calm down. They're back to four and one. Uh, going to Kentucky. Maybe that's the team that's playing pretty good right now, too. I think it's maybe is going it, to is Kentucky. It Kentucky. Is it up there or down here? I think it's there. We beat we we beat Will Levis last year and made him look like he's a junior college quarterback. I thought it was up there. 
last it year. It is up there. No, it we, no it's we, up there this year. It's up there this we year. We pounded them last night on a Saturday night in Knoxville. All right, folks, if you want to talk to us about Tennessee football, hey, you can still call us about high school, too. We'll talk it, but we're going to end our show. We're talking the college stuff here for the next few minutes. But uh, 483 112 give us a call. We'd be more than glad to listen to you, talk to you, and tell you our opinion. You can tell us your opinion. That would be great. Uh, 483 112 give us a call, and we'll talk that college football with you. Uh, we're talking about Alabama and Ole Miss right now, tomorrow's game. You oh, know. it's Alabama. Alabama's the fourth and then, game? And then Kentucky. Tennessee, yeah, they got UTSA, South Carolina, Texas A&M at home, then at Alabama, at Kentucky, and then back home for Connecticut. And then Georgia. And then Missouri, then Missouri, at Missouri, and then Georgia back at home. I'm worried about that Missouri game. I'm telling you, four and one, and you roll into Alabama, everybody be ready. Everybody be feeling good all of a sudden again. Be it'd be, sec, be, it'd be sec. more than four and one. Wouldn't it be five and one? If they win the next three, they're two and one right now. They'd be five and one. Oh, that's right. That's five right. and yeah. one rolling to Alabama. So you're predicting, you're predicting that maybe. No, that's what they need. That's what that needs to happen. Yeah. I, I, man. Okay. Now this is a wild card because we neither one know what they're going to do tomorrow as far as point scoring. You think Tennessee wins? A bit? A little insight here. I understand that the quarterback tomorrow for the visiting team might not. Play. He's possibly hurt, has played all three years. I mean, he started. So I think could they be would, at a disadvantage because they're not going to have their starting quarterback. I not think they'd that love really to matter. score points early and get Nico reps. I don't think they want Nico to have reps, Cox. I don't understand. Why would the offensive coordinator come out? This is a real good question. I'd love to ask Josh, Hi Josh Hoppel this question. He probably wouldn't answer it. Probably wouldn't even take the question from him anyway. But why did the Tennessee offensive coordinator come out this week and said it didn't matter who played last week? It didn't matter if we put our other quarterback in. It wouldn't have been no different. Because the offensive line couldn't even get in a blocking scheme because they don't have their center in the center because all the audibles and all the schemes at the line of scrimmage. But do you think those Tennessee fans that's wearing those orange goggles, as you say, or pay, they care about listening to that? No, they just think the backup quarterback is better. They don't know that. Don't so they think that? They think that. <laughs> you can say they don't know that all you want to, yeah. but they think that, right? They 100% think what, that. What, do you think that? No. Gosh, no. Go watch them. I mean, you, you go you, – I mean, we went to spring scrimmage. We went to – I mean, you – he. I mean, Milton <coughs> just has more control of what's going on. But, I mean, you got to think about – Yeah, but they say he can't process the offense I fast enough. I don't know about enough. that. Well, I'm just what I'm being told. I know, I know. I don't know about that. I, I mean, just, you know, I might have an inside source over there. And, 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 I mean, and Nico throws a heck of a ball. I mean, it's just, but like Milton just, I mean, when, I mean, you just watch them both go and he just rolls with it over there. I just don't think they can, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're doing it wrong, but if you watch the NFL game, it's the same exact way. I mean, the center literally control. They, they played three centers in an SEC football game. And they might have played three last weekend. That's what I'm saying. Last weekend in one game, yeah, they played three saying. different I know centers. they played two for sure. I didn't know the third. So. Yeah. Well, I don't know anything about the freshman other than that he's a, what, a five-star? He's a five-star player. I don't, believe in the, I don't believe in the star system. I don't, yeah. It don't really matter to me. I think you need to know where he played football at, what classification he played in, and then you go over there and, and let it all yeah. work out in the wash, and, and you see because, you know, uh, I look at where you play, and if you're a good enough player, you can make it. And yeah. you'll, you, you know, I think the kids at small schools don't get the same. Let's take Parker McKinney, for instance. He didn't get the same hype that somebody, because he's at Cofield, somebody from, say, uh, Keith Sport Dobbins, Ben, or Maryville, or Oak yeah. Ridge, or someplace like that. And Parker McKinney, you know, we're seeing what he's doing right now. He's having a really, you know, He's, he's a good football player. I think he could have played in the SEC. I think he could have played at he could have played at a number of schools. And not only that, I think he could have played on the defensive side of the ball too. But that's just, that's just me. I don't know nothing about football but anyway. But went found a really good fit. Had a heck of a career. Still having a good career. He's still there. Yeah. He's finishing out his last year there. So uh, I think you'll make the NFL roster next year. Uh, I, just as a backup quarterback in the NFL, I think you'll you'll have him a career there to make a. Maybe a practice. If he doesn't do that, it may make a practice squad. Or, you know, because quarterbacks are 
he can do some things that the NFL sort of going to now. They're looking at quarterbacks that can run the ball just a little bit and do some, For sure. you know, do the, you know, the run pass stuff. So uh, RPO stuff. So uh, we'll see. But Tennessee tomorrow. What do you think they win by? Thirty? No, I think it'd be about twenty. I think seventeen to twenty points. I'm gonna stick with three. Yeah, I don't think they're just they're not they're not spinning yet. They're not clicking yet. How come? Cause the offensive line. I think the offensive line. I think your quarterbacks having to. You know, I think, I think the game looks like it's moving. I think the game to me looked like it was moving really fast to Joe Milton in the first half. In the second half, it looked like it slowed down. You take away a couple penalties and calls on a couple of those drives late. Um, you know, just such a – dug them such a big hole. They, they were the better football team. Florida's not any good. I, <laughs> we saved the coach's job last week. He's not any good. I don't know if you. I don't know if you did. I honestly don't know if you did. That, they, that's a huge. That's a huge win, yeah, though. Yeah, but people will continue to lay eggs like Tennessee did down there. That's a huge win for I him, agree. though. It's a huge win I agree. for him. It got him a couple more weeks. Couple more weeks, think just a couple more yeah, weeks. Well, he's going to lose to somebody that can't line up, and it's going to get him. I don't know who's on his schedule. I don't even know who he plays. Don't I don't matter. know if they play Alabama or Georgia. Or I, don't, I mean, Georgia I don't. for sure. So they play. That's right. They play because that's called the biggest cocktail party. They yeah. play that. Uh, is that Georgia? That is Georgia. Yeah. yeah, Florida and Georgia play that game in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville every year they do. That's you're right. All right, folks. Week six of high school football is in the books, and nobody's called us here in the last few minutes. We're going to talk college or high school. We appreciate you watching us tonight. Uh, Cox, any final thoughts? Next week will be fun. We'll have a lot to talk about. We'll ever have some happy Clinton fans or some happy AC fans next Friday night. We'll see what's going on. Pretty quiet right now. I'm surprised there ain't a few people calling in tonight. Uh, Clinton fans probably licking their wounds a little bit tonight uh, over that game. So we'll see if, uh, next. Well, it's a Thursday night game, but still don't matter. We'll talk. Uh, it should be plenty of opportunity for everybody to call next Friday because that game's on Thursday night. So, But uh, catch us here next Friday night with our game of the week is Loudon and Kingston. That'll be a really good game. Loudon's at Kingston. I think they call that maybe the Battle of the Bridge or something. Or, or that's what? Who? Hoop. Okay. So. All right. Some boat. Hoop Gibson Bowl, man. So that's a big game down there. Loudon's been a pretty good team in the last two or three years. Made some playoff runs. Kingston also, you know, they've dropped a couple this year, but still yet a good football team. Coach Coach Pankey's done a good job down there, and uh, we'll that'll be a good game. I would assume that game starts at 7. We'll probably pregame by, what, 6.30, Brad? No, the game, kick -up, it starts at kickoff at 7.30. 7.30 pregame at 7? Pregame at 7. I didn't see that. If I'd have just read the TV screen like y'all put it up here for me, I would have been able to have said that. Now that, that ass. Uh, we start the pregame at 7, kick off at 7.30. Cox, I still think you're wrong. You're on the prime train. I tell you what, Cox, if Dion goes undefeated, I'm going to buy you one of them prime hood shirts. You're on board <laughs> now. You get you one of them. I'm going to get you one of them prime. Oh, I love get you one of them prime hats. I and you wear it. it right here on TV. <laughs> I love it. You can, be, you can be prime's number one spokesman here. Get your Colorado hat. It's got prime on the side if of it. If they win their next two games, I'll come in here in a white Colorado hoodie with my sunglasses. Okay. That's a deal, man. That's, That's a, deal. a deal. I'll call him see if I can get you something to send in here then. I don't need him to send me any. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going to – yeah, I want it to come UPS to your house <laughs> from him. That's what I want. From hey, we'll see you next Friday night right here on the Free Medical Clinic, Friday Night School Board. Thanks to Free Medical Clinic and all of our sponsors. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference. So we can all continue to move forward together. Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your
your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris. Work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111 and turn your red into a chicken. 
1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. cheerleaders here at ORED warming up for tonight's big game. Ready? Clinton Dragons! Clinton Dragons! Clinton Dragons! Let's go Dragons! Let's go has exciting appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. His team has scored more while holding Oak Ridge to less than the previous season. His first season, it was a 36 to nothing shutout. His second year, it was 22 to seven. Last year, it was 21 to 14. Coach Keith's son, Joshua Keith, has been a starter for all of it, and he's turned into one of the best quarterbacks in East Tennessee. Both Oak Ridge and Clinton had disappointing performances last Friday night, but the Wildcats will be without head coach Derek Rang, who was thrown out last week for sideline warnings. The the opportunity to get that rare win is there for Clinton. Can they seize it? We'll find out tonight in our OEB Law Game of the Week. Day or night, 24-7, someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation and get to work on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit the website full of helpful information, wreckintoacheck.com. That's OEB Law. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by former head coach, current co-captain of our broadcast, Dr. Dan Shoemaker. Rivalry game are always fun, but this is a great time to be a part of this one as we've possibly reached a crescendo in the Oak Ridge winning streak. With, with both of these teams coming off a loss last week, this week we're going to see who can rebound and get ready for this game. Re rivalry games are always big, and this one is no exception. One special little tweak in this one is longtime Oak Ridge coach Joe Gaddis will be acting as the head coach tonight for the Wildcats. This game has a lot of backstories over the years and we're going to tell some of those tonight. I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Rivalry games like this are always special. So I guess you could say Oak Ridge is running the Wildcat with its head coaching position. The, the AD normally on the sideline, coming in, stepping in place for the head coach, just like a, a running back or a skill player would for a quarterback on the field in the Wildcat uh, position. Anyway, that's, that's Dan Shoemaker. I'm Aaron Harvey. And we'll get more into this game a little later and we'll also preview other games going on around the area. And we'll do it courtesy of Elaine Wall and the East Tennessee Properties. Elaine has over seven years in the real estate business, and she's consistently producing millions of dollars in sales a year. If you want to buy a home, she's got you. If you need to sell a home, she's got you. Give her a call or text today, 
623-619-6748. It's on your screen there, 423-619-6748. Stick around, and we'll be back with more of the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Football is back. And OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail biting your misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865 546 1111, and turn your red into a chicken. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester. Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies' boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Patterson's Appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid for over 55 years. Our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs. We service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances because we care. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. And welcome back to the Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine serves most of all of East Tennessee's real estate needs, but especially if you live in Anderson, Blunt, Cumberland, Loudoun, Knox, McMinn, Monroe, Morgan, Roan, and Scott Counties. If you need to buy or sell a home, she's your agent. Ten million in sales a year ago proves she has the experience and know-how. So get with her today. Call or text 423-619-6748. That's 423-619-6748 for Elaine Walden of East Tennessee. Tennessee properties. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined with Coach Dan Shoemaker, and there are tons of great games this week, including one we saw last night on Rivalry Thursday between Bearden and Farragut. This one is a great rivalry that's even resulted in vandalism over the years. However, Farragut had won nine of the last ten tries. Bearden scored first last night, but the game was back and forth before the Bulldogs captured the hard-fought 21-14 victory. Yeah, as a conference matchup, I thought this one would be a good one, and it did not disappoint. A 
tied 7-7 seven, seven to half. You had long drives. You had turnovers. You had blocked field goals, onside kicks start the second half. Uh, this game really brought the excitement. I think the running game that Bearden had really seemed to take over a little bit, especially there in the fourth quarter. But the special teams kept Farragut in this thing until late in the fourth quarter. All right, moving on to Anderson County at Carter. So far, it's fair to say that the Mavs aren't competing at the same level as they were last year, which is understandable. The Hornets, however, seem to be improved from a season ago. Carter runs more than they throw, but not by much, as quarterback Isaiah Monday has thrown for 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. I'd say if you like offense, that game in Strawberry Plains tonight will be a good one to watch. Yeah, both these teams are really hitting their midseason stride getting ready to make a run for the conference title and playoff positioning and all that. Both these teams are producing on offense. Both are 1-1 one and one, or 1-0 one and oh in the district. I, I think that there will be a lot of points scored, but I feel that whichever defense can slow the other team down will have the advantage, and that's going to be the difference. And I think that AC might have a slight edge right there. A pretty good matchup at North Knoxville tonight as Powell hosts Halls. The Red Devils are 5-0 and this season, but haven't played a region game yet. That ends tonight. And the Panthers are coming off an impressive 45-27 win over this Clinton team. If you look purely at statistics for the year, the teams are pretty even across the board. It's worth considering, however, that Powell has probably had the tougher schedule and should be more seasoned at this point. Halls has had a very impressive bounce-back season in Coach Derek Hughes' second season as the Red Devils were just 2-9 and nine a year ago. However, this game could be putting out vibes of 2019 when a Halls 5-0 and o team went into Powell only to lose 49 to nothing. It's worth noting that that Powell team was also undefeated, however. This one should be a lot closer than that one. Yeah, I, I think a 5-0 and o Halls team will be tested tonight for sure. Uh, they've not played nearly as tough a non-conference schedule as Powell has. If Powell can contain the running, or excuse me, if Halls can contain the Powell running game, uh, they'll have a chance. On the other side, if, if Coach Lowe and company can get the running game going with Wheeler and that powerful, powerful offensive line and just take control of this thing like they've done in other games this year, watch out. Yeah, Connor Wheeler has racked up uh, some of the most yards rushing in all of the state of Tennessee, so uh, it's it's impressive. A five foot nine hundred and seventy five pound guy like like Wheeler is able to do that at the five A level, but he is very very good. So that's going to be a good one. We'll keep an eye on that as well. We've got a few more games that we want to talk about, and then of course we are about eighteen minutes away from kickoff here between Clinton and Oak Ridge. We'll preview that game as well when we get back to our. Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health. For every moment. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. <laughs> Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. At Rayburn Ford in Clinton, we believe in turning moments into memories. From life's milestones and growing families, Ford is there every step of the way. How about a new 2023 Ford Edge all-wheel drive ST, 42545. 2023 Ford F-150 Super Crew, 53398. 2023 Ford Escape all-wheel drive ST, 33939. Local you trust? 
a new Ford your family can afford. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. We are the Oak Ridge cheerleaders here at ORUD warming up for tonight's big game. C A T S Cats, Cats, Cats. 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 You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. ORUD has exciting appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. Welcome back to the Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine is on the backside of the first decade of her real estate career, and she has the experience to sell your home or get you into your next home. Stats back that up, and she's a multi-million dollar producer year in and year out. If you live in East Tennessee, Elaine can take care of you. Give her a call or text 423-619-6748. That's 423-619-6748 for Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. Join again by Coach Dan Shoemaker, I'm Aaron Harvey. You know, Oakdale will be looking to get back on track tonight following its first two losses of the season, both of which came to region opponents Oliver Springs and Greenback. The Eagles are at home tonight against a winless Harriman team, but it's a Harriman team that has also lost to Oliver Springs and Greenback, but by smaller margins. The Blue Devils, coached by former Oakdale coach Travis Tapp, have suffered some heartbreakers this season, including the 27-26 loss to Oliver Springs. An interesting note, going into the fourth quarter, the Eagles Eagles trailed Oz by the same exact score, 27-26. That final ended up much different, though, as the Bobcats doubled their point total in that quarter alone before winning 54-26. This one has the potential to be one of the closest games the state of Tennessee sees tonight. Yeah, yeah Aaron, Aaron, I know both of these programs well. As you said, Coach Tapp has been the head coach at uh, Oakdale and is the head coach at Harriman. Coach Foles has been at Oakdale for a long time as well, and he's turned the corner. He has turned the corner down there with those guys. Uh, that program, you know, is, is competing and competing at a pretty high level. Uh, the two communities are really close geographically. Uh, these programs, though, are on different paths. Harriman, the Blue Devils are looking for their first win of the season. That's a hard place to be this time of the year. While Oakdale's looking to right the ship after dropping the last two. They're looking to get back on a good foot, so to speak. Harriman is averaging 12.8 points a game. Oakdale is averaging over 38 points a game. This will be a rough road to hoe, I believe, for the Blue Devils as they travel up the hill to uh, take on Oakdale at Oakdale. You know, an interesting note, and I don't know if you know this or not, because you said that you came around 92. Right. So you used to have to go through Oakdale to get to Harriman before Highway 27 just kind of bypassed Oakdale. Right. So uh, you were talking about the paths that the two teams are taking. It's interesting because uh, they did used to be a lot more related than they are now because you had to go, if you were coming from Morgan County, you had to go through Oakdale in order to even get to Harriman. So, interesting little geographical note there for that game as well. You know, Greenback's in Oneida tonight for a non-region Native American theme clash. A year ago, the Cherokees pulled off the 13-10 victory. The year before, it was the Indians getting the 17-14 win. Two straight years resulting in a three-point margin, and this one could turn out close to the same way. Uh, Oneida is a hard place to go play. I've been going going up there for years and years as a coach. I, I, I know the uh, Indians are glad to be home. We're going to pause here for the national anthem. Yeah, we are.
national anthem is a good thing to do. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, anyway, I know the Indians of O'Donnell are glad to be home after that long trip last week to Benton. Greenback is not the greenback of the past. I think with that and playing at Oneida, I see a clear advantage for the Oneida Indians tonight over the Cherokees. And I think the, the Indians will be on the warpath for sure. So I can't believe after tonight, we'll be more than halfway through the regular season. Having said that, that means region standings are beginning to take shape and take form. And so how about we look at those? So we'll start out with Region 2 Single A. You've got Coalfield up top, 3-0 overall, 1-0 in the region. Oakdale, 1-0 in the region, 3-0 over. That's not true. That's not right. That's incorrect. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try again here in a second. Anyway, that playoff picture is really starting to shape up. You know who's at the top? Of the, of the regions. We know who's running in the middle, trying to work their way into that three or that four spot. And then we know who are on the back end that need some help if they're going to get into the postseason. So, yeah. You know, so as, as, as this season, as, by this point, uh, those lines are starting to get really clear. By single A standards, that district is extremely tough. And then with the addition of Rockwood into it as well this year, which by the way, uh, a matchup that I was really looking forward to when I heard that Rockwood was going to single A was that Coalfield Rockwood matchup, and we'll have that matchup for you uh, later on this season. Uh, I imagine those teams in the past, how good that they have been, what if they'd have played each other in in years past, like recent past. Right, right, yeah. Uh, that would have been very interesting, and we'll get to see it this year. I, I know both of those staffs pretty well. They, they used to scrimmage each other in the spring and go against each other in seven on seven. So they're very familiar with what each other does. Uh, but now that they are in the region together, uh, you know, that's going to be a big clash. I, I think that's going to be a really nice addition that may develop into a rivalry. But see, it, that's such a good, because you got Oliver Springs there. They finished second in that region last year. Coalfield, obviously, perennially, they are very good. Uh, you've got uh, Midway, which is improving. Rockwood's in there now. You've got Greenback, which is been a force to be reckoned with. Obviously, they're not the same greenback as you mentioned, but they're still tough. And Oakdale in there, it's that that is a, a very talented and deep region. And so the top four teams to get there will have earned it. There's going to be a fifth and a sixth team in that region that would dominate another region within the state. A, 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 you know, one of the other seven regions. Yeah, for sure. I tell you what, let's Let's take a break, and then when we get back, let's preview this Clinton-Oak Ridge game because this is a great rivalry that has been taking place pretty much every year, and uh, we'll tell you all about it when we get back. You are tuned in to the OEB Law Game of the Week, and this is the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Chancellor Jamie Brooks has been practicing law in Anderson County for over 30 years. He knows our community, our people, and our values. He's a conservative with the experience and temperament you want in a judge. He listens courteously, considers thoughtfully, and upholds the law. That is why Governor Bill Lee appointed him to the bench. The Republican primary is March 5th. Let's keep Jamie Brooks as our Republican Chancellor in Anderson County. out of your time and end each day feeling good. 
That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris. Work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Football is back. And OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense. Call OAB Law and turn your wreck into a check. It's almost time for kickoff in tonight's matchup between Oak Ridge and Clinton as you see Clinton running out. Let's preview this thing in the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. You know, Elaine did $10 million in sales last year. Perennially does multiple million dollars in sales. So why wouldn't you give her a call or text for all of your real estate needs? The number is 423-619-6748. That's 423-619-6748. Back in 1942, Major General Leslie Groves had led the purchase of land in East Tennessee to establish a site to enrich uranium for World War II. By 1943, that project was in full swing as a community of a handful of people were relocated so that a whole new community of workers and their families could come inhabit the secret city. That secret city, city established a school and a football team which played three games that season, one of which was against a nearby school named Clinton. That nearby school won 20 to nothing but in 1944 the tables turned Oak Ridge bested the Dragons 32 to nothing in the season opener now Clinton had success for the next few years and won five times before 1950 but that's the most successful run it's had in this series as a matter of fact Clinton has only won seven more times since the series is lopsided in Oak Ridge favor Oak Ridge's favor 49 to 12 that doesn't stop this game from being a heated showdown that both teams and fans look forward to every year, though. Absolutely. That's that's a great history lesson, by the way. Uh, as a former history teacher, I appreciate that. This series has a lot of stories, but I think the biggest one to me overall is that 49-12 to 12. Uh, overall record. So any Clinton win is special and any Oak Ridge loss is rare. The balance that we see with these two programs this year is going to be a great matchup. These games are for pride and for bragging rights and when you go to the local barbershop next week they're going to talk about what happens in this game tonight. So I, I think that this game is very important on a lot of levels. When talking about star power in this game for Clinton it starts with Joshua Keith. The coach's son is thrown for just shy of a thousand yards and ten touchdowns but he's added 200 on the ground with three scores as well. The leading rusher is Juwan Goins, who has 258 yards this season, but he's also second in receiving yards with 184. Those two have really helped this offense pop, as it's averaging over 300 yards per game. Yeah, that combination really does produce for the Dragons. As of last week, Joshua Keith had an overall quarterback rating of 116.5 with 10 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Another name, though, I want to throw out for Clinton is Chauncey Phelps. Last week he had two kick returns for 94 yards and a touchdown. In these big games, special teams can make a big, big difference. And Phelps had a, a great game in last year's game as well. You know, for Oak Ridge, Sophomore Blaine Stansberry got the nod to start. Football is He's produced. He's throwing for 219 yards per game while completing over 60% of his passes. But he's also thrown nine interceptions to six touchdowns. In the backfield, DeJavis Dozier is averaging 116 yards per game. And at wide receiver, Brendan Hayward and Almani Rimbert are the key weapons with 376 yards and 269 yards, respectively. Head coach Derek Rain not on the sideline. He was ejected at McMinn County for sideline warnings. Never heard of that. Two sideline warnings is an unsportsmanlike conduct on the head coach. So four uh, unsportsmanlike or four sideline warnings, two unsportsmanlike conducts. He's ejected and he has to miss this week's game. So I've never never heard of that. But uh, 
happen. That's yeah, that's always something you worry about. I was always my own get back coach because the officials want to know who's your get back coach. I'd say it's me because I'm the guy you're going to kick out if we don't take care of this thing. Uh, I think Stansberry has grown a lot as we've seen the year go. Uh, as a sophomore, he's starting to play more like a junior, and you expect that as you start to progress through the season. He's got a couple of receivers on the outside, uh, Haywood and Rembert, who can run good routes and they can catch. If they can get Dozier going early with the running game and then throw when they want to, I think they can have a good night. All right, time for Dr. Dan's do's and don'ts. And a new segment, of course, that we started this season with Dr. Dan. So let's see what we got here for the Oak Ridge and Clinton game. Okay, Oak Ridge, I think they need to get the running game going early. I think they need to play great defense, force turnovers, and they need to contain chunk plays. When Clinton has big plays, don't let them go for scores. The don'ts, don't get behind the chains. Third and long will be hard for them tonight. And don't get predictable on defense. You need to vary the calls to keep the offensive front for Clinton off balance. For Clinton? For Clinton, don't. Uh, on offense, get your playmakers going early. Take the top off this Oak Ridge defense. On defense, get the second and long, third and long to make your off, make the Oak Ridge offense more predictable and avoid turnovers. Don't let the hype, the don'ts, don't let the hype of this game overpower the record, overpower you. The records don't matter. The next play does. And don't get behind and need to catch up. So here we go. Oak Ridge will get the ball first with your Daniel Forrester kickoff tonight. And the ball will bounce at the 20 before it's picked up. And up to about the 33-yard line, I believe, is where they call it. And that's where Oak Ridge will take over on offense as on that return was Jermichael Howard. Nice uh, short kick, nice return. Uh, you know, get, get your offense on the field, get your defense on the field, and, and get this thing ready. So Hammers first and 10. Stansberry quarterback and a hard count, and we've already got a flag. Unforced error. Uh, that adrenaline's flowing, and when you hear that hard count, you got to go. I understand that. He, he's going to come over to the sidelines now. Yeah, he's going to calm down a little bit. Coach going to talk to him. So Stansberry hands the ball off. This goes to Hayward. Hayward he's, with some running room around the, the outside. Still on his feet, makes it to about midfield before he's run out of bounds, and that is where Oak Ridge will have another Hammers first and ten. Nice design play, two backs. Uh, Dozier's going to be the lead blocker here. Ooh. It's a nice block on the safety, and that gets you to the corner. You know, on Rivalry Thursday, Oak Ridge was, was on with uh, Packer and Price and crew, and they made the comment, he's uh, a Dozier. Ooh. As now we got a fumble on the play, and it's Ooh. picked up by Clinton. Going back the other direction, it's Chauncey Feltz. Feltz is in the end zone. Wow. For a Sabra Bochamp touchdown. Clinton strikes first. Wow. Uh, fate strikes. Balls on the ground. Scoop and score. Nice play. Double handoff. Fumble on the second handoff. And do you fall on that or do you pick it up and score? Phelps decided he was going to pick it up and score. And, you know, if he'd have bobbled that and then Oak Ridge had recovered it, then you would have said he did the wrong thing. But you know what? He didn't. He didn't. No. He got there. 20 seconds into this thing, Oak Ridge has already threw its first possession. And Clinton leads 6 to nothing. Extra point pending. That kick is up. Off the, off the upright and no good. Ooh. So the extra point fails, but Clinton strikes first 20 seconds into this game. It's the Dragons leading 6 to nothing over Oak Ridge on our OAB Law Game of the Week. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. And 
back at the OAB Law Game of the Week. Aaron Harvey, Dan Shoemaker. Uh, if you're just now joining us, the score is 6 nothing, Clinton, but Clinton hasn't been on offense yet. Not a single offensive play for the Dragons. Chauncey Feltz picks up a fumble and returns it for the score, and Clinton, the home team, goes up first as we get set for another Daniel Forrester for Chancellor kickoff here. And I think they're going to... Okay, so now they're going to kick it from the right hash instead. And for Clinton, your kicker is Emmanuel Ortiz. we got Dozier deep for the return. And they did not kick it to him. Instead, it's Hayward, and Hayward not.